Hey, Dr. Clark with you again. We're looking at Stokes' theorem here, and we're gonna do a couple examples. Before we do that, let's just quickly remind ourselves what does Stokes' theorem say? And what it says is, uh, over here, you have this surface integral. This is the curl of a vector field F, okay? So there must be some vector field you know, wind blowing or whatever it is, water flowing, some vector field. And what we want to do is for each point in the surface here, we've got some surface. We take, say, a point right here. We draw the normal vector. And then for that vector field F, we compute the curl of that vector field, which is itself a new vector field. And when we dot it with n, the normal vector, we figure out how much is that vector field circulating around that point. So is there a bunch of circulation happening inside that surface or not? And what the surface integral does is it adds up, okay, here's some circulation, here's some circulation, here's some circulation, adds them all up. By taking the curl, dotting it with n, that gives you a number, and then adds up those numbers for every point in the surface using the integral. Okay, what you should notice though is when you do that counterclockwise circulation, here it's coming down, here it's coming up, those two will cancel each other out. In fact, they'll cancel each other out everywhere except for when I draw it on the boundary, then it's going to not get canceled out by anything. And so that's why Stokes' theorem right here says that the surface integral is equal to what happens on the boundary curve C. So around this, there's a curve C that bounds the surface. And if I take that same vector field F and dot it with the tangent vector T, I get the contribution of circulation around the boundary, right? And when I add those up for the whole line integral, F dot T dS, I get the net circulation around the boundary. So the net circulation happening in the surface here is equal to the net circulation around the boundary, and that's called Stokes' theorem, that this integral, which is one thing, and this integral, which is another thing, are equal. And then just this other notation, f dot dr, some people use that. I like the f dot tds myself because it tells you what's going on. Okay, so here's a problem where we're going to actually work through this. We've got this surface, x squared minus x, y squared minus y shown here. Uh, above the rectangle, 0 to 1, 0 to 1. Here's x, here's y. And what we're going to do is this surface integral here. We're going to compute that surface integral for this vector field f. Okay, so the first thing is we need to know what is the curl of the vector field f. Okay, so we can do that using the cross product. We do i, j, k. Then we take the x derivative, the y derivative, and the z derivative of the vector field, which is x, z, y squared. And when we do that, let's see, for the i, we're going to get y derivative of y squared. Well, that's 2y. z derivative of z, that'll be minus 1. Um, then we'll have minus j. And for j, we'll have the x derivative of y squared. That'll be 0. The z derivative of x, that'll be 0. And then plus k, for k we'll have the x derivative of z, which will be 0, and the y derivative of x, that'll be 0. Okay, so the curl is 2y minus 1, 0, 0. That is the curl of this vector field. Okay, so then we're going to do this surface integral for x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 1 of 2y minus 1, 0, 0. Okay, that is grad cross f, the curl of the vector field, we need to dot it with n. Well, what is n? Okay, well, n is the normal vector, and that usually comes by doing this gx, gy1, right? There, for each point in the, vec in the surface, there's a normal vector, and this will not be the unit normal vector, but it will turn out that what we need is n ds, and ds includes that little patch of area there. But when we do this quantity and then we multiply it by dA, it bundles the stretch factor with the dA and we'll end up with exactly what we want. Okay, now in this case, gx is going to be this x derivative and gy will be the y derivative. 
Uh, so what a 2x minus 1 and 2y minus 1 will be the x and y, respectively. So we'll have negative 2x minus 1 and then y squared minus y, comma, and then we'll have negative 2y minus 1, x squared minus x, and then we'll have 1. I got a little bit scrunched here. Let me just erase this stuff because we see what we've got there. 2x squared minus x, and then 1, d what? dx dy. I guess I've written it. Okay, now when we do this dot product here, we got these zeros, so this is going to be a lot, you know, a lot better than what you may be worrying about. We're going to just have 2y minus 1. There'll be a negative there. 2x minus 1, and then y squared minus y plus 0 plus 0 dx dy. Okay, so now we'll integrate the x's. It's just a calculus integral now, so that no problems here. Um, We'll get negative 2y minus 1. That's just constant, basically. Integrate the x's, we get x squared minus x, and then we get y squared minus y. That's just constant as well, so these are the only x's. And we evaluate that from 0 to 1, dy. Okay. And when we put in 1, we're going to get 1 minus 1 is 0, and when we put it in 0, we get 0 minus 0 is 0, so we get 0 minus 0 dy. And then when we integrate 0, we get 0. So we get 0. Okay. So it turns out I picked a vector field whose net circulation must end up being 0 for this particular surface. All right. So let's check the other half of Stokes' theorem. So the other half of Stokes' theorem says, hey, if you do the surface integral, it's the same as doing the line integral around the boundary. So let's do the line integral around the boundary. Well, the boundary is this rectangle from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 in x and y, right? And uh, so we're going to have to do it in four parts, right? If that's c, then the, the integral of f dot t ds will actually be four integrals. Okay, now what is the vector field f? Uh, let's go back and remind ourselves what it is. It's x, z, y squared. Okay, so that's x, z, y squared. Now, of course, it's going to end up being uh, x, 0, y squared, because in this case, z is equal to 0 when you're in the plane where this curve is actually living. And then we're going to have four integrals. So here we go. On this one, so if this is x and y here, what is the tangent vector? Well, it's just one zero. That would be the unit tangent vector, right? And so, and you might even write that as one zero zero for in three dimensions. So we're gonna have integral over C1. Well, it's not gonna be a closed loop anymore, but we'll just do an integral on C1. So we have x zero y squared dotted with the tangent vector, which is one zero zero. And then we're gonna take those x is basically from what, 0 to 1? Okay. And so what do we do here? We get integral of 0 to 1. We get x dx, which is x squared over 2 from 0 to 1, which gives us 1 half. Okay. There we go. Then we, so that was number 1 down here. Then we've got number 2, which is this line going up. For that one, we're going to have, now the y's are going to go from, so we'll have dy, y's will go from 0 to 1. Vector field will be x, 0, y squared again. The normal vector will be 0, 1, 0. And that's going to end up being 0 when you do the dot product, you just get 0. So that integral is going to be 0. There's 2. I'm thinking the same thing is going to happen for 3. So 3 is going to be 0. And then let's do 4 will be the top here. There's 4. Okay, now the unit normal vector is, or the unit tangent vector rather, is negative 1, 0, 0. So we're going to have integral 0, 1, x, 0, y squared, dotted with negative 1, 0, 0, and we'll take the x's from 0 to 1. And we'll get ourselves what? We'll get uh, negative x squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 1, that's negative 1 half. 
And so now we got a one half there and a negative one half there. When you add those up, you get zero, which is what we had when we did the surface integral. So there you go. Um, you get a little bit of a circulation here, but then it's canceled out by the circulation there. And these circulations were zero. And so the net circulation around the boundary is zero as the surface integral told us right there. Okay, so that's a nice example problem where we checked both sides of Stokes' theorem and showed that you get the same answer whether you do it one way or the other. So the nice thing about Stokes' theorem is you just do it the way you want. Hey, if this one's working or that one's working, just do the one that works. Okay, let's tackle one more example here, and then uh, we'll call it good. So Stokes' theorem says uh, compute the curl of F dotted with NDS for this vector field, S is the portion of the paraboloid Z equals 4 minus X squared minus Y squared above the XY plane, N is the upward unit vector. Okay, so here we go. Let's draw the picture. 4 minus, it, it's this paraboloid that looks like that. It's going to intersect down here. Um, I guess X would be 2, 2 squared is 4. Yeah, so it's a circle of radius 2. It's x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's the equation of the circle in the xy plane where that uh, hits the xy plane. There's 4 up there. Okay, so that's our C. And what they want us to do is use Stokes' theorem, which is to say don't do the surface integral. Instead, do the line integral around the curve there. Okay, so basically we're going to do curl of the vector field F dotted with N DS, that's equal by Stokes' theorem to this line integral of F dotted with T DS on C, the circle. So that's what it means to use Stokes' theorem. It says don't, use, don't do the surface integral, do the line integral instead. Okay, so now we need to parameterize that C. Well, I'm going to do 2 cosine of T for X and 2 sine of t for y, okay, and that means that x prime is negative 2 sine of t, and y prime is regular 2 cosine of t, so my tangent vector will then be t, will basically be negative 2 sine of t, 2 cosine of t, 0, that won't be a a unit tangent vector, but when we do t dt, it'll package it up for us. So that's going to be nice, and that's going to be t's between 0 and 2 pi to get ourselves around that circle. Uh, f is the vector field, 2y. Okay, z is 0, so that's going to be e to the 0, which is 1. So we're going to have 2y, e to the 0 is 1, and then arctangent of x, negative arctan of x, and then we need to dot that with... Um, and I'm just going to cut this and move this down a little bit because we ran out of room. That's okay. Okay, dot it with negative 2 sine of t, 2 cosine of t, 0 dt. Okay, when we do that dot product, what do we get? Uh, we get 2y. Well, hey, wait a second. What's y? y is 2 sine of t. So we're going to get 4 sine of t, because y is 2 sine of t, double it, that's 4 sine of t, times uh, negative 2 sine of t, that's that dot product, and then 1 times 2 cosine of t, Oops. and then 0 times arctangent, that's 0, dt. And so now we've got just a regular calc 1 integral, we can do that. And I think we're going to have to, uh, yeah, because we have negative 8 sine squared of t, we're going to have to use the half angle formula. So sine squared of t in the half angle formula is what? I think it's 1 minus cosine of 2t over 2. And then, of course, we got the 2 cosine of t over here. Okay, now we can actually do this integral, whoops, don't need to write the integral because we're going to compute it. Uh, one half, that's going to be one half t, so negative 8 over 2t, and then we'll have plus uh, 4, and the antiderivative of cosine is sine 
of 2t over 2. Okay, so there's minus minus, that made plus. 8 over 2 is 4. And then the antiderivative cosine of 2t is sine of 2t over 2. And then we're going to have 2 sine of t here. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. And I think what's going to happen is you're just going to have negative 8 pi. Because when you plug in... 2 pi here, you'll get negative 16 pi over 2. That's negative 8 pi. Plug in 0, you get 0. And sine of 4 pi, sine of 0 is 0. Sine of 4 pi, or sine of 2 pi, sine of 0 is 0. So you get a bunch of zeros. So negative 8 pi, final answer. Okay, so that's, that's a nice problem there. Um, just a straightforward take Stokes theorem. Use it so you're doing the line integral instead of the surface integral, and then do the calculus until you get the answer. All right, hopefully you found that useful, and we'll see you in the next video.